Hey everybody, it's Christine Bertram, and I am coming to you live from the Hive on Monday, April 10th. It is um, just rocking and rolling right through April. You guys, I looked at the calendar, and I'm like, huh, already? To the middle part of April, by the end of this week, you guys will be halfway through April. So there was a kitten sighting. He is here with me. Um, he is a little bit playful. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> I may have to take him inside. Uh, I don't know. I guess we'll see how it goes. <laughs> um, he's had a lot of activity and interaction these last few days. Uh, we had Marlies and Andre, her son, 14-year-old son, 15-year-old son, uh, here since Tuesday, you guys. It was almost a full week as of last night. We got them back to the airport. They made it in this morning at 1.30 a.m. Miami time. And they gave Tigger lots of love and attention these last few days. And it was really good for Tigger. <laughs> he did so good. Oh, yeah. So maybe that's what happened to the first part of April, you guys. It just seemed to fly by really fast. Um, it was good to see her. I haven't seen Marlies since we figured it was 2018. Um, I think she came to visit in March. And then I went to visit her later that fall. And then it's been five years or four and a half, something like that. Too long though, right? <laughs> so uh, long overdue. And um, oh, you guys, you can see him. He's over there. He's on the counter. Way back there. That's the little boy right there. Trying to put things on the floor. You guys probably heard that. <laughs> so, oh yeah. So we went to Vern's Cheese in Chilton uh, and my friend bought a whole bunch of cheese to take back to Miami, which is good. Uh, they, she picked like 10 different packs of cheese to take back with her because everybody loves Wisconsin cheese back home uh, for her. And um, we got to see baby kittens being born on the farm. My mom had two cats that were preggers uh, and they both loonied, we call it loonied, they both popped or loonied on the same day, basically, between Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. Um, I think Kit Kat started on Wednesday. She had a few babies, and then, I don't, it's something with cats is they don't have to have babies all at the same time. So she had another baby on Saturday. <laughs> and then Bootsy, who is Tigger's mother, had babies on either Thursday or Friday. Uh, so that's awesome. We're hopeful that we get another little kitten here, or sister for Tigger. Um, and we had a great Easter gathering. We had 21 people all together at my mom and dad's yesterday. I uh, had uh, ham and beef tips and ham balls and all of the everything in between. We played marbles. We rode tractors. We got my 1969 Herbie Love Bug out and started running him around. And so we definitely had a lot going on yesterday. Saturday was a fun day. <laughs> Thank goodness my, my cousin Kelly, who is the gal that helps me. You guys see Kelly? Um, in my lives. Uh, he's definitely playing with a card, you guys. Uh, one that he loves that has a little effervescent elements in them. Um, so Kelly lent us her ping pong table. It's been in her basement for the last five years and they didn't use it after they had kids. And so they were like, if you can get it out of here, you can borrow it. So Andre and Tyler nonstop ping pong. <laughs> as much as they could get in, they got it in uh, with uh, the ping pong tournament. So um, we played marbles. It was just, it was a good all around break. Um, now I don't say it was a break. I still kept working on things, you guys. <laughs> I had class Wednesday night and both Marlies, I should say all, Marlies, Andre and Tyler all took the class. I had class on Thursday night. Uh, Friday worked on stuff in the morning. We designed a class. I'm so excited. Um, um, Carissa had off of work. And so she drove up here and um, dropped off some things and picked up some things. And in the interim, Marlise and Carissa and I got the May monthly class designed. So I'm going to show you guys those cards. I'm so excited. Yay. It just, it's been nonstop good. <laughs> and then in the interim, you guys, it was Saturday night at five o'clock. And I thought, oh, huh, I never wrote the tutorial for this class. And so between Saturday night and Sunday morning, I wrote the tutorial and Karen proofread it for me and had it back to me last night when I got back from the airport. And lo and behold, by 9.30, you guys had it in your inbox. Yay! <laughs> so a little late, but uh, you know, always by the day before is a plus, right? The morning of has only happened one time, right? So I'm happy, you know, I can live with the day before, especially with what I had going on. <laughs> so I only had one person reach out to me, which was amazing. And so I was able to tell her about everything I had going on. And she, everybody always understands, right? But you guys get a little worried if you don't have the tutorials usually by the day before. So I appreciate everybody's patience with the, getting the 
tutorial the day before. So let's go through here. We have Sandy Wicklander. Hi, Melanie Foy. Hi, Linda Hunt and Susan Bellamy. There's Judy Immel and Barbara Rudolph. Hi, Vonda and Mary. I said I'll be there in two minutes, so I got you guys knew I was coming. Uh, hi, Sharon Land and Mary Carls, Jean, Wick, Jean Maxwell. Hi, Donna Grushke. There's Annette from Bullhead City, Arizona. It's going to be 96. You guys, we had 68 yesterday. It was a walk around without a coat day kind of <laughs> kind of day yesterday. Hi, Dawn Ablett. Hi, Linda. Oh, he loves to put the my tape correction things on the floor, you guys. Uh, hi, Randy. Hi, Debbie. Now, Susan said, don't forget to hit the thumbs up and share the video, you guys. I did post on Facebook the link to the YouTube video so you guys can share it on Facebook or YouTube. Hi, Lynn Beasley and Jennifer. Hi, Karen Woods. Hi, Marsha. Hi, Yvette. There's Karen Wettstein. Hi, Laura Sullivan and Mary Schreiber. Woohoo! Hi, Becky. I'm Sherry Martin's here. Hi, Susan Ray Hendricks. You guys, we have a bigger class today for Let's Just Stamp. Hi, Angela. Hi, Polly. Hi, Linda. And there's Penny Powell from Florida and Mary Ann Jeannie Parker. Long time no talk. <laughs> All right. So, yes, it was a good family fun week, you guys. Hi, Linda Grady. Um, oh, Linda Grady, you missed the class with Tyler because you were not here in person. So Tyler took the in-person version of the Greatest Journey class, you guys. That was Lucky Hand. And so I had Andre, Marlise's 15-year-old son, and then I had Marlise and Tyler all in class with my normal people, my normal peeps. Uh, and so it was, it was good. He enjoyed it. <laughs> um, Andre said he enjoyed it, but he said he wouldn't take another class while he was here. And I'm like, okay, well, that's good because I don't have any other classes. <laughs> he said, maybe next time though. <laughs> hi, Karen Drain. Um, who else? Hi, Carissa. Hi, Linda Hall. Hi, Veronica. Uh, Montoya. Veronica, I hope you saw my email. So you guys, the retro swap party has in full swing. Uh, I should say the party's not in full swing. The, um, the, the, the stamping. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I actually, hang on, Veronica. I had somebody who needed to cancel this morning. So um, an update, you guys. And this is primarily for Veronica. Let's see here. You guys, the swap party that I have with the retro, radically retro swap party is set for this Saturday, Sunday at 3 p.m. Central. It's going to be via Zoom or in person. And um, it was all set. Like sign up was by March 13th. Well, I had somebody reach out to me this morning because I sent a reminder. There are about six or seven people who didn't get their cards in yet. And I had somebody that can't fulfill their requirements. So Veronica, you emailed me last night. You said that you, oh, look, ticker sighting. <laughs> it's like a little shark walking by. Um, so Veronica, you had tried to sign up, but it was on April 6th. The swap was closed. And as of last night, I had no open spots. But um, I had somebody that can't do group number four. So if you, Veronica, want to get... Whoa, kitten. Stop that. If Veronica, if you want to participate and do one group... Oh my goodness. See? He's wanting to play, you guys. Oh my goodness, baby. Okay, so Veronica... Again, if you want to do a group, I have one group of 20 available. It's group number four. You could be my angel stamper. The only thing is you got to have the cards into me by Saturday at the latest. Otherwise, they will miss the swapping. Okay. Um, if anybody else wants to be on standby as well, I haven't heard back from the other six people that are supposed to have their cards in by Saturday. Um, if somebody else needs to back out, I may be looking for somebody else because I ultimately want to have all the groups full. There were four groups of 20 cards each, making 80 cards. And so, Veronica, you're watching, you're listening. Hopefully, if you want to do this, email me. Let me know you for sure want to do a group. And it would be 20 cards, all of the same design using retired product. The only thing that could be current are in um, the colors of cardstock or ink pads because some people don't always have, like, Stampin' Ups. Um, retired stuff that maybe they only have current Stampin' Up! colors. It all needs to be Stampin' Up! But, Veronica, we need to talk in case you want to do that. So, um, oh, Mary Carls. Yes, she said, don't forget you became a new auntie. That is actually, that all happened as well. So I mentioned there were 21 of us yesterday for Easter, and that 21 includes my new little niece, Maisie Lee. Uh, she was born on 
the 4th, Tuesday the 4th, around 7.30, my uh, future sister-in-law went in for a C-section, and Mark and her uh, came out of the hospital on Thursday with a new baby girl. So I am an auntie as well, another auntie. Um, and so yeah, she was 7 pounds, 20-ish or 21 inches long, and so she's doing good. She was there yesterday for Easter, so her very first family gathering um, was a good one. <laughs> so thanks for helping me remember that, Mary. Uh, yeah, so kitty kitty play day in your house also. I love it, Penny. Okay. So, um, yeah, so the, the retro swap party is coming up, you guys, which is awesome. Almost, there's a lot of cards. If you guys look down here at my sheet here, this is what I've been doing to keep track of things. All of the, the highlighted ones are all the information that's already, those are people that already have them in, so that's awesome. All right, so what else is coming up this week? There's a lot, you guys. Um, tomorrow is a kidding day. We're going to be kidding up, I think, two or three classes, especially the Technique Club class. We're going to be kidding up Ready to Ride tomorrow, and we're going to be kidding up this week Favored Flowers Stamp a Stack along with um, the In Color Retirement class. So there's a lot of kidding going on this week. And on uh, Wednesday, you guys, we have the Share, Create, and Inspire card class with uh, uh, thanks to Sandy Wickliner. She got her recipe in, so I'll be doing um, her recipe this coming Wednesday morning, kitten sighting you guys. <laughs> I love it when he walks by. Oh, I don't know. He decided to stop. Okay. <laughs> so anyways, <laughs> I love it when he walks by. It's like a shark. Um, so the, the create or share, create, inspire is on Wednesday morning at 10. I have my monthly class this week. You guys, the, the class looks like I have them right here. I'll show you the cards. These are the three we're making this week. So I have this in person on Wednesday. I have it online Thursday night, and then it's in person on Saturday. So if anybody still wants to get signed up for this, hi, Eliana, thank you so much. If anybody still wants to get signed up for, oh, there's like goo all over that. Um, <laughs> good thing it's in plastic. Uh, so these are what's coming up this week. I have about eight left, maybe eight to nine left of this class. And you could attend either in person or online. Um, and then what else is coming up? Oh, kitten. Uh, oh, you guys want to see the May monthly cards. Hang on. Let's show you the May ones. So you can already get signed up. Just let me know if you want to sign up or not. We picked three carryover stamp sets and paired them with new designer series paper, new colors, the lemon lolly. We pulled in the new Zangy Zoo paper, the countryside in paper, and the daisy paper. Uh, new ribbons got pulled in here. And so um, new embossing folder got pulled in. So sun prints got featured, grassy grove got featured, and then the sweet citrus got um, included. So this is the May monthly class. So I thought I'd share that with you because it's hot off the press. So those I need to get them photographed and then um, we'll get the cover photo created. And just a little note too, um, if anybody wants to get any of the class that I did last week, I think I still have four left. So, um, four past, so this is a past class from last week. Um, it includes a goodie bag with the product. So if anybody still wants to get in on the greatest journey, I have about four left. So I thought I'd share that with you in case anybody's wondering. Um, so busy week ahead, you guys. It's the start of a, a good day, Monday. Uh, we got a lot to get done this week and lots of good classes. Um, I will admit I did not get my high on my books highlighted with the last chance. I got halfway through the mini catalog and I got stuck. I didn't get stuck. I got like sidetracked and had to do other things. And so I'm still in the process of highlighting my books. I do plan to go um, through the file or the books with you and share what's retiring. I mean, we still have about three solid weeks before the catalogs retire. So I feel like I have a little time. Hi, Carmen Sanders. I've got a little time. My goal is to get that through today or done tomorrow, somewhere in the next couple of days. I keep thinking that, but what's happening now is we have the new catalog. You guys, I have my new catalogs and I need to get them stamped and I have the new schedule. You guys, I'm so excited. This is what I worked on this morning. I have the basically the May through August schedule ready. Um, it's being proofread. You know, I always make mistakes and I have amazing eyes, sets of eyes that help me. Uh, they look for anything that I have wrong. And one person already came back with an error that she found with a date that was wrong. And I'm like, good, okay, let's keep it coming. And so once I have my proofreaders, like look over it, um, I will be publishing it. Um, I'll include it in an email to everybody that's in my email distribution group. And I also post it on my website. So um, if you are not part of my email distribution group, if you go to my website, cardsbychrisb.com, you can sign up 
you can sign up to get emails from me. So um, that would be the first way that you would see when my updated class schedule coming out. And that would have the new suite classes. It's what we're featuring for Let's Just Stamp, what Rose and I are featuring uh, for the Technique Club class. And so all that stuff is picked out already and, um, and it'll be published very, very soon. I'll be printing out schedules and those people who are getting mailings this week, I plan to include a paper copy in your package because if you're like me, you love paper <laughs> and you like to highlight and mark things on it and um, having that paper copy is always nicer than I think using my cell phone to, to keep track of things. So, uh, so yeah, that's great. So you guys can watch for updated schedules in your, um, your kits that you get this week and anybody that is looking for something to get into. Yes, he is Penny. <laughs> Hi, Maria Gilbertson. Maria, Check your email from me. You are one of my gals who is in the retro swap that I need your cards by Saturday. And I know you just got back from a cruise, girlfriend. Um, and I'm hoping that you're going to get those cards in the mail ASAP because they're due to me on Friday and if not Saturday at the latest. Okay, Maria calling Maria. <laughs> just putting it out there, Maria. <laughs> All right. So you guys, we're going to do roll call really quick as long as I have this book in front of me. Um, <laughs> keep trying to see where he is. Oh, I'll talk about distractions. Okay. So yesterday we left him here by himself, you guys. So I thought he needed a little love. That's why I brought him in today. I'm giving him a shot <laughs> to see how he works today. So, all right. So we have, first and foremost, we have Annette Rollin, and then Julie Bierschbach, Donna Gruschke, Karen Wettstein, Cheryl Thomas, Angela Knutson, Barbara Rudolph, Cheryl Pittman. He's trying to get things off the wall, Penny. Kitten. Come on, Kitten. Oh my goodness. I have bumblebees on the wall that are about three feet high and he it was trying to get it off the wall, you guys. Okay, Karen Stagg, Linda Hunt, um, Vonda Saia, Vera Anderson, Penny Powell, Ramona Culp, Laura Sullivan, Susan Bellamy, uh, Susan Ray Hendricks, Cindy Runtree, Ellen Brover, Karen Cotton, Shirley Malarkey, Jeannie Parker, Sherry Everett, Sandy Wicklander, uh, Jennifer Jones, Sharon Land, and then we move over here. We have Debbie Gass, Stacey Warner, Sandy Gorin, Marge Heisey, Doris Munson, Barbara Godby, Betty Pyle, Mary Carls, Debbie Schultz, Fancy Nancy Billets, Karen Woods, Latokia Trigg, Carla Lake, Leslie McMinn, Mary Carls, and Lynette Mooney. Whoop, whoop, okay. All right. <laughs> So, we have quite the crew, you guys, for class here. Um, Jeannies are going in the mail tomorrow. Okay, Jeannie, I'm so happy. I know you were trying to figure out your embellishment, um, so I'm glad to uh, get that figured out. Uh, reminder, it was for those that are left, and Carmen, I mentioned that you're also one that I'm waiting for cards, so hopefully you get yours in the mail. Or if you're going to make a personal delivery and attend the party, that would be phenomenal. <laughs> you're always welcome to stay overnight, Carmen. Um, so, we have six sets of this class left. So, if anybody's watching this video later today or during the live or anytime in the next week or so, um, check with me if you're interested in getting the kits because there are six. I planned for 48 and we made um, we made 48, we planned for 48 and there's 42 signed up at the moment. So, um, so you're welcome to reach out to me if you're wanting to get these. Otherwise what happens is they will eventually move to my past classes. Uh, past available kits that are in the back end of my schedule. So, okay, so we did the roll call. Um, let's see here. Um, we will do at the end of the class. You guys, he's getting squeaky. Like he, um... <laughs> did you guys see that? Something fell off the edge. Um, I can... Diane came last week. You guys remember if you watched Diane came last week? <laughs> um, and... She got here and she went through the entire room and she picked up about eight things that he put on the floor. All right, seven. Sorry if you hate cats or you're not into cats and this is annoying. Um, this is the story of my life these days, it seems. You're just going to have to ignore it or not watch. <laughs> I guess that's how it goes, right? Um, and I'm okay with whatever you guys want. But hopefully you don't mind the kitten being um, a little pest in the background. All right, I'm just writing numbers down next to people's names. 10, 11, 12. So we'll do a drawing later. We have 12 people. Carmen's mailing hers tomorrow. Awesome. I'm so happy to hear that, Carmen. And Jeannie, that's good. That's that's um, that's a few people. So Veronica, too, if you can get on the ball and get cards made for group four, then that would be amazing as well. All right, kitten. You got to start getting yourself under control here. We got a class to do, kiddo. You either got to like either take a little nappy nap or you got to do something, but 
you knocking things on the floor is not helping me, little bitty. Wow. Okay. Oh, he's got like a, okay, okay. Susan loves kittens, so I got, I like it. I, if it didn't fall, he pushed it, exactly. Oh my gosh, this kitten. So you guys, this is what we're working on today. This is a bonus card class because normally for Let's Just Stamp, you get three cards. But what we wanted to do is we, oh, I should open the blind for him. Hang on, he's got a scrouch his neck here. Hang on, come on, kitten. There you go. I, uh, he likes to have the blinds open. So what I want to show you guys is how to do this. This is kind of like making your own designer series paper. And if you don't, hi, Andy Aquisto. <laughs> oh, Anne loves the stories. Good. Um, what are the requirements? Veronica, you need to go to my events calendar at cardsbychrisb.com. Go to my events and go click on um, April 16th. All of the requirements are in that event. Why don't you go take a look at that? And then why don't you give me a call if you have any questions after I'm done with class or message me. Uh, so we have, hi, Mary Schreiber loves cats and enjoying him looking, <laughs> knocking things off the table. Good. Okay. So this is what we're featuring. Two-tone flora and something fancy. And if you don't have them, kitten, if you don't have them, then you could always use any other flower set that you have. It doesn't have to be these flowers. And you don't have to use these sentiments. So let's just stamp. Diane and I have been doing it. We're going on two years this summer that we started doing this class. And we try to find stamp sets that have multiple focal images and different sentiments so that you could get easily three or four cards um, out of like one stamp set for like easy, right? Um, we try not to use any die cutting or embossing or punching um, because this class is supposed to appeal to people who don't have that. It's the art quote unquote beginner stamp set class. There's a beginner card class. That doesn't mean that the cards aren't um, beautiful and that doesn't mean that we don't use layers. Uh, it doesn't mean that we don't use embellishments and ribbon because we definitely use all of that stuff because we love making over the top cards generally, right? So you're not gonna sacrifice um, the layouts or the design because we're not using, hi, Jean Terlegger. Um, Jean, I think you need to send in your retro swap cards as well. So we're not going to sacrifice that because we're not using the die cutting, embossing, or punching. So these are what we're going to be making today. I always like to call out you guys in the video link here. If you go to, oops, I went back too far. If you go to the description it, here, hi, honey. If you go to this description, I have a link for a video and it's right here. I Oh, and there it is. There's a link right here that says, let's just stamp. I think that's a hyperlink. Um, if you click on that, that will take you to the very first video that I ever did. And it really talks about um, what to do and what you need when you're a beginner stamper. Um, so because I did that first introductory video, I don't do an in-depth video every time that I have this class because it would be reinventing the wheel every time. Uh, Kitchen is okay. My puppy um, came in and is being a pest. She heard you say her name. Maisie! Oh, that's awesome! <laughs> Sorry that I <laughs> probably am confusing her. Um, so, so again, if you're a new stamper and you need help or you have questions and you're not sure where to get started, all you have to do is reach out. I would, be love, I would love to help anybody who's getting started figure out, well, what do you need to get started? Like, what are some good stamp sets? What are some good ink colors? Some good markers? All that good stuff to help you get going. So, with that being said, we're going to start with these two cards, and I want to show you this. I feel bad. I had this little picture, or, and it's not a picture. I should have taken a picture of this and sent it to everybody in the email I sent out last night with a tutorial. I think I'm still going to do it. I'll take a picture of this and then follow up with another email with this picture so you guys can see what you're going to do. Um, so, uh, the swaps are in the mail. Yay! You're supposed to get the cards by Wednesday. Total last minute. Hey, that's not last minute. Saturday would be last minute, Jean. So I'm so happy to hear that they're on the way. All right, so we're going to start with this one, you guys, and we'll put these guys off to the side for now. Um, I do, I just realized here, I do have some happy mail I need to share with you before we get going. So this is from Miss Sue Wagner. Uh, she said this, uh, she sent this card. She actually, um, this is the inside. She punched out the little butterfly. It's really cool. So she gave Tyler, he's always wanted to take apart a big shot or a stamp and cut in a boss machine or a vagabond to see how it works on the inside. And Sue had 
a vagabond, a past one that no longer works. And so she sent it to Tyler. She dropped it off and then gave us this beautiful card. And she said to have Tyler take it apart and investigate how he needs to. <laughs> so I thought that was funny. And then happy Easter comes from Linda Kester. So Linda, this is from you. Thank you so much for this beautiful Easter card. Jeannie Parker, if these are the butterflies you were talking about, these you can't put those on your retro swap card because they're still current. So just a beautiful card from Linda Kester for Easter. So thank you for that, Linda. All right, so back to this. Let's talk about what you guys got in your kits. Um, you, <laughs> you caught a lot of pink, black, and white paper. I will be honest. <laughs> you got two different card kits, right? One card kit you're going to have the embellishments in. So this card kit has your embellishments. This card kit has a bow that's already made. And I left my ribbon out like this so I could show you how to use the bow maker. But what you have in your kits... Oh, thanks, Cindy Runtree. You have, two, in, there's two different envelopes, right? One has each of this. So you're going to have your two pink bases. You will have a white and a black for your inside. You will have a white and a black for your top, okay? So this is what you have in each of the kits. Um, if you guys ever get, a, and this is really hard to see, but if you ever get a kit from me or a paper with me, and it sometimes has that frayed edging, that has a tendency of happening on my trimmer. I try to catch it and cut it myself like this, but if you ever get that, all you have to do is take your scissors and give it a little haircut on the side. No big deal. Like just, just trim it off and you end up with that little schnibbles. Just throw that in the garbage. I try my best to catch everything that has that fraying on it because sometimes if I don't um, get it just right, it'll do that. And so I try not to have it happen, but just in case. So you have two kits. One will have the ribbon and then the other one will have the embellishments. But what we need to do, here he comes, but what we <laughs> can see him eyeing me up like candy to get up here. I know, why are you so squeaky? Do we need to take you inside? You guys, I think, I think what I'm gonna do is he's really rambunctious. Normally by now, he goes and he goes underneath the chair and he goes to sleep. I'm just for peace of mind, so I don't know if he has to go to the bathroom or not, we're going to drop the camera down and I'm going to take 30 seconds and I'm going to run him over to the house and in case he has to go pee because I don't need him peeing in here. Hi, Carmen Melinda. So we're going to take a 30 minute break, you guys, and uh, I'll have you study the cards here for a second. Okay, come on, baby. Come on. Come on, baby. Okay, that was probably a really good idea because he bolted straight to the basement <laughs> and didn't hesitate. So, all right, you guys. Well, you got your tigger fill, hopefully. <laughs> and now he's off in his own little world of the house. <laughs> so, um, I love them. I have three myself, and Tigger thinks he's just a big playpen. Yeah, he, he says, you guys. Hi, Suzanne. So, he, Tigger, has the whole reign of the house, basically. And so, now he's in the house, so he's, he's going to do good in there. All right. So, you guys, the stamp sets, one is photopolymer. The flowers are photopolymer and the words are the red rubber, right? So, what we're going to do is grab um, the piercing mat and put that underneath, okay? The other thing I would recommend doing is having a piece of scrap paper underneath here. And then if you go over the edge, you don't hit your piercing mat. Now, if you're going to do this class or this card, what I might recommend if I were you is to keep this as a solid piece because then you don't have to worry about your paper moving. But to make this card, these card kits work for you, I cut them and put them into envelopes into your kits, right? So ultimately, this is what we're going to be making right here. And I'm going to take these out so you guys don't have the plastic to contend with, with watching. All right, so then you can see that. So 
ultimately we need to grab, so we've got pear pizzazz ink. We used some melon mambo ink, and then we're gonna pull in daffodil delight, okay? So I am going to start with the melon mambo. And the other thing about this is, because we're using stamps that have like a first and a second strength, I'm actually going to grab a little, I wonder if I have another piercing mat. I don't think I do. I'm gonna grab another little scrap to, to stamp off to get my second strength. All right, so let's make a little room here. I'm gonna set this here. All right, so with these, you guys, we had this fancy flora class a couple, I don't know if it was a month ago already, or if it was two months, it was it was some time ago. It was maybe in February, it feels like just yesterday, but um, we learned in that class that it was almost easier to stamp the detail first. So generally, if it was me, I would stamp the outline first, sorry, the solid first, and then do the detail over the top. But we did learn in that class that it was easier to do this detailing first. The detailing is gonna be in first strength, where the solid under stamp is gonna be at second strength. And you wanna make sure you keep these butted up together like this. And ultimately, you're gonna start with, I started with the bigger flowers first. So I'm gonna, and they could kinda go over a lapping if you want them to. And if you notice here, that one's got three pink ones and this one has two. That's all right. So we're gonna put this one over here and then we're gonna do one over there. Can do one. Now, if you don't like to do this kind of a setup, you don't have to. You could stamp your cards however you want to. We're gonna do that one like that. And we'll put this guy over here. Okay. Then we're going to, hi Sherry Everett. We just got started, Sherry. We're gonna take this and we're gonna do second strength. And there's one. What I did is I looked for those little hangy stamen things or whatever, the middle of the flower. That's what I was looking for there. Oh, let's get that inked up better. And now we're gonna do this guy. Just hovering there. I don't know if you guys can see, I went to right to where I could get that lined up. And we're gonna ink up again. I'm gonna match that up again here. You are more than welcome to try to do it the other way. The detail after the, the solid. There's that one. And one more here. Let's get it just... I can't see it, hang on. <laughs> there it is, oh, there it is, okay. Okay, so we've got the pink done. Then what I would do, let's see what I did on the inside too. A yellow one, okay, so I'm gonna shut the pink up and we're gonna do the daffodil. And I'm gonna get a different sheet of paper to use for my scratch paper here. And we're gonna do the daffodil next. And again, I'm gonna do the more, the detailed one first, which is this guy. Holding these together again. That guy's gonna go there. I'm gonna sneak one over here. Put one on over here. I'll put one right in that area there. Okay, I think that's good for now. And then you're gonna grab the more solid one. Oh, she switched again. Okay, good, 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 good. All right, then this lines up on that one. And then we're gonna do one right here. And then we'll do one over here. Same thing, what I do is I look for that little middle section right there. And then one over here. Now the leaves are where it's important to keep these together because those are what's gonna cross over more. Um, I'm gonna leave the yellow set up over there because we need to do the inside. So 
So we'll leave like that. And then it's we use pear pizzazz. Now, oh, I think maybe it might be granny. Oh, what was it? Pear or granny? Hmm. What was it? I feel like it's pear. So we'll see what's about pear first. And I've got the little two leaf. And they're at a combination of different first and second strengths. So I'm going to put a first here and then a second there. And then we're going to do a first, a sneak them in the middle here. There's a first. And when I cover, like when I hit the pink, I sometimes pick up the pink ink. So I like to like clean it off a little bit. So we're going to do a second strength there. So I'm just filling in the leaves. So then we're going to go over here, fill that one in, and then we'll put a second strength there. We'll put a first there and there. Do one there. Okay, you got to be careful when you go over the edge of the paper. So you get a little line. We're gonna do a full strength up here. We're gonna do a second, whoa, almost lost that one. We'll do a second strength in the middle. Let's do a full strength over here. And I'm not sure where else I wanna go. I feel like it's looking pretty full. So this is a way how you can make your own designer series paper. The flowers are pretty. I looked up at the camera. I'm like, oh, that does look very nice. Okay. So do I want any more? I think I might do another second strength coming off right there. So let's divide them. Okay. I, you know, I'm good. I think let's just see here. I feel like I want one leaf in here just to help with that little white area. So what I think I'm going to do is I'll put my piece of paper right here to act as a you know what I mean? It just didn't cover up the flower then. Like I kind of use this as a mask. Okay. Now what happens is one goes for one card and one will go for the other card. And then while we're at it here, we're going to get the insides ready and stamp them. And the inside, I did a little yellow flower. So we will grab... The little yellow one. I'm gonna do them both the same. Okay, and then we will grab that back and stamp off right there. So we got the yellow flower. If you guys want to decorate your envelopes, that would be a great time to do it. Hi, Deb Norman. So there's our yellow, mellow yellow and then our leaves. So, probably, oop, that's the wrong thing. Let's move it over there. We need the leaf back, which is probably right here. Let's see. Put one there and there. And if you want, you could always add a second strength one like that. And then we'll do one more. And we'll just do it full strength right there. Okay. Think that's it for those. Now we just need to stamp our sentiments. And the sentiment that worked good on the one was thank you that I liked. There's a little bit, there's a little bit room here for it. And that thank you will fit right there. So we'll do that one first. Don't forget the thumbs up, Cindy says. Thanks, Cindy. So let's see. I'm going to get this out because this is the red rubber stamp. So we're going to stamp the thank you there. Perfect. And then the other one, there isn't a lot of room down here. Do you see what happened? I moved, I moved my flowers over a bit. And that's okay. I could put the thank you up here. I could put the thank you in the middle. Um, your call. I'm going to put a bow right here. That I know. So I think I'm going to move it up here and then I can put some embellishments up there. All right. So very heavily 
labor intensive with stamping on these cards because you're basically creating that background. So let's see here. So this goes here and that's my sample. I'll take a picture of that for you guys. Now we get to get glue happy. And then because this is let's just stamp, we double mat everything. So let's do these. And then we'll put this like this. Okay, so we're gonna get glue happy. Hi, Ramona. Oh, thanks so much. <laughs> I appreciate that. And then we're gonna put some liquid glue around all four of these. We figured that with Let's Just Stamp, because we don't do die cutting and embossing, we like to do the double matting on the inside to give you an extra layer. So then they match very nicely. So your black pieces are your five and a quarter by four, and then the white pieces, I could be five and a 16th by three and 13 sixteenths, or they could be five by three and three quarters, I guess. I can't remember <laughs> how I cut them. Either you're gonna see a little bit more black or you're not gonna see as much black, but okay. Move that over here. Okay, so let's put these. And we're gonna, you guys have yours already folded. You just are gonna wanna take and burnish your edges with the bone folder. That helps to make for the nice crisp crease like that. Okay, and then you can flip these. I noticed that this guy also had, needed a little help trimming off the little hairs. We're back in business. So we're gonna flip these, flip these. Hi, Sue Spigner. And if you are looking for, like, let's say you don't have a lot of designer paper, this is the perfect way to make it look like you just made a card that has designer paper. And a great way to um, have a quick, easy card. Oh, I was looking for these guys. Okay, so then the thank you, this goes here. Like that. This one will go on the front of this one. Melon, Mambo, and Black. They and White. They are such a pretty combination. And then here, we'll put this one on the inside. Like that. And then this one will get the same inside. So these two were two different cards, but very, like you, they look very similar, but yet a little different. And this one looked great. You didn't need a bow. We didn't think I mean, it looked great. For this one, there was that little open space there for me. And I thought, oh, let's make a bow. So you guys, if you get the kit from me, you already got your double met bow. It's already made. But I do sell these bow makers. I and mean, if anybody needs them, just reach out to me. I can help you get one. And we're just going to run that around the nails twice. And it goes up and over. And we're going to just do a little overhand knot back here to get our ends nice and tight. And I'll make a little bow. Thanks, Cindy. All right, so that is already done for you. That little bow was in one of your kits already. Like that. And then we'll use a little glue dot to put that one on the front of the card. I'll just set it, oh, there it is. We're gonna put it right about there. So put that little glue dot down and then find the back of your bow and stick your bow in the glue dot. When I do a double bunny ear, I like to pull the little ears apart just a little bit. You're gonna definitely wanna grab your ribbon scissors and trim the tail. So this is the, the main difference between the cards. Is one has a bow and one doesn't. That was intentional, okay? And then what you'll have in your kit, um, you'll have six classic matte dots and You'll have, I think, a combination of small and big. I'm pretty sure I probably gave everybody three small and three big, If I think. <laughs> that would have been my plan, I think. So we will do, I think I'll put a small and a big at the top of this one. And then another small one maybe there. And then on this one, we'll do small and a big that and then a big one up there maybe okay I didn't Stella anything I do feel a little bit bad I didn't Stella anything but oh there's a little black dot right there 
The question is, does it need Stella? <laughs> and where would you Stella? Um, because, like, you could Stella your ribbon. Um, if you do Stella any of your flowers, it will make them bleed. You could, if you wanted, is get a little yellow ink and dip your Stella in the yellow ink and then draw in the insides of those flowers. I don't think... Huh, thanks, Jean Maxwell. That little inside is not a stamp here. But that being yellow would be pretty cool. If you wanted to, you could grab your yellow marker. Let's see where the yellow marker is. You could always take a yellow marker and color these in since they are the insides of the flowers. I didn't do it on my original sample, so you won't see that in the picture that I took, but if you just wanted to take a little yellow pen, you could color in these middle parts so that they're not white. And you could always do that with your Stella pen and some yellow ink. All right, there, I got them filled in. So then you can see, would you like it? And here's option one, the white's on the inside. Option two, you got yellow on the inside. Whichever you like. Okay, that's it. <laughs> we got these two cards done. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, as they say. Yes, Lynn, pretty spring cards. I completely agree. We need some flowers <laughs> in our life these days. All right, so that was the first set. And again, for those just catching up with us right now, what we did is you just held your two white pieces together and butted them up together and you stamped. And then you just cut it in half, but yours are already as two white pieces that are cut to fit in your card kits. But there's our first set of cards. All right, so this was cards one and two in your tutorial. I did pay attention. <laughs> Card number three in your tutorial is this one right here. And we're gonna do that one next. So we are in, as, and we are in fact going in order for the tutorial today, you guys. Very rare occurrence. <laughs> So thanks, Linda. Thanks, Deb. Okay, bright, cheerful card number three here features Bermuda Bay, which is a retiring color, along with Melon Mambo and um, white. We pulled in white. For this one, the designer paper that we brought in was from Hues of Happiness. Most people will get a pattern that looks like this, but there are a few people, I think I ran out of this one, so there were like maybe four or five people that are gonna receive like a rainbow color pattern with flowers instead of these little check marks. Oh, they're not check marks, they're little plus signs. So just know that you may have one. It still will look good with it. Um, it just is gonna be just a slightly different pattern. That's what happens. Like. You run out of designer paper, but yet there's a pattern that looks very similar that is good too. So that's what happened. So you guys will have that little designer series paper, two inch strip. You'll have a white and a melon mambo strip for the front here. You'll have your white and melon mambo. I wonder if I cut that. I didn't cut that right. Ooh, I gotta go get the new one. The white is right for me, but my little sample here is not right. But you know what? I'll make it work actually. I think it'll still look okay. Oh, maybe I'll, I will fix it. I'll cut a new piece. And then here, and then you guys on your inside, you will have a melon. See, <laughs> I know exactly what happened with this one. Uh, Diane and I created a card because we designed these cards together and we weren't 100% happy with it. So we definitely reformulated it. And when it came to the kit then, I didn't kit up correctly. Like I didn't give myself the right measurements. So I can fix that, no problem, by just cutting this really quick. So I needed one more Melon Mambo here. That is four by five and a quarter. You guys already have these in your kits. Like that, so there's that. And then my Melon Mambo piece here is it's two two and a quarter by four and a quarter okay let me cut this really quick so i've got two and a quarter by four and a quarter now we're back in business i don't need this or this bermuda bay back i was very sad to see that bermuda bay is going i sell gift certificates to a local restaurant and her color is Bermuda Bay. And so I need to stock up on some Bermuda Bay paper 
because otherwise she won't be getting the color that matches her, her store, <laughs> her colors for her logo. All right, so there's what we have. And then this is our inside. Um, thanks, Donna Gruski. All right, so you guys, you're gonna have yours already folded. All you gotta do is burnish it. And then this'll be our layering here. So let's do our stamping. So now this one, when we designed these cards, we intentionally used all the different flowers, except for we didn't pull this, that's that one, that pair at all. We pulled in this set, this set, this set, and this set for these cards. So we need for this one, the Bermuda Bay ink. So let's grab that. And we also need the Melon Mambo again, which is right here. So we need Melon Mambo. And your call, I I think that we use the pear pizzazz, which is another color that's retiring. Um, but Granny Apple might look really pretty and cheerful as well. So if you want to use either one, that's fine. In your kit, you guys are also going to have these little strips of ribbon, the polished pink open weave, and the Tahitian Tide. So those are in your kit, plus three rhinestones. Okay, let's stamp this guy first. I'm sad about Bermuda Bay too, Lynn. <laughs> Very sad. Um, I love it. It's such a, a bright, cheerful color. They have a couple blues that are coming out and, you know, that, that aren't the same, but they do have a couple new blue ones. So I'll see how those fit in. Um, so we need Bermuda Bay and Melon Mambo. Let's just do Melon Mambo quick here. So I've got, you could do congratulations or happy birthday. I guess we'll use the congratulations. When you stamp this, just make sure you save a little room because right here, I've got the ribbon sitting here. And so you wanna stamp a little closer to the right-hand side. And this is another one where you wanna practice. Because of it being red rubber, you can't see, oh my gosh, that's actually straight. Okay, you can't really see. <laughs> see if it goes right here. So I'm gonna go a little closer to the right than the left. Oh yeah, okay. I'm okay with that. All right, so that's congratulations. That's it for the pink. I think that, oh, we used that little guy in the inside. Okay, hang on, let's grab that. I didn't know we used that little guy. I guess I didn't pay attention. So we'll grip that little one out. Grab some blocks here. And just stamp that in the bottom. So that's the white piece for the bottom here. I'm skipping the piercing mat for the moment. I'm just going for it. So we're gonna do that. And then this one is at second strength. Just lined up, there's four little, I wish you guys could see this. There's four little circles. All I did was line up the empty circles. That's what I've got for that. All right, then that will go here. Now we get to do the flowers. Grab the piercing mat back. And this one uses Bermuda Bay. And I think that it's this one because the other one is for the other card, perfect. So we're gonna go for the detail first again. No rhyme or reason. Oh, thanks, Laura, I'm glad you like this color combo. No rhyme or reason, but just kind of sporadically putting these flowers. So we've got one there, one's halfway on, halfway off up there. We've got one off to the side there, one over here, one down there, and one there. Now, I didn't switch the block around. So hopefully, as because I was holding it that same way, I should be able to hold this one. Once I figure out the first one, it should be the same. So let's think. <laughs> I'm gonna go around in circles until I make sure I get it right. I think it was right the first time like this. Those five little, I think right there, look at that. Again, I went for the five little holes in the middle and you can see they're white in the middle. 
because there should be no ink there. So now if I hold this like this, I would like to think I shouldn't have to guess a lot where it needs to go. So there it is. And then we'll do it again up here. I think it was back to the way I had it right there. And then this one. No, I think it's back to right there. My main thing is I was looking for those six little white dots right in the middle. There's that one. And there's one more over here like that. Okay, that's what we ended up with for the blue flowers. They line up very nicely. Shouldn't need the blue anymore. Now we're going to go back to our pear and we're going to sneak in our leaves. And I believe I've got them. Oh, look at that! <laughs> so we originally, guys, a little insider information. We started off with the colors reversed. We did a, petal, a melon mambo bottom. We did Bermuda. And then we did pink flowers here. And then it was a pink background and everything was kind of reverse. And so instead of throwing that piece of white paper away, I'm like, oh, I'm going to use it. So I went to go stamp on the back to see if I went first or second strength. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, there's flowers back there. All right, let's put this back this way. And I'm going to sneak in right there. This one will go there. Put one there. Put this little guy right like that. Sneak that in the middle there. This one's gonna get covered up because of the label being there, but we're still gonna do it. And then this one, see how that fits in there? Oh, we'll go like that. This one can go like that. So we're just filling in leaves like that to make a background. If you want, you could do one more right there. Fill in a little spot. And then we can't forget, nope, that's it. We, our inside looks like that. I wouldn't put that big leaf with that. All right. I think that might be it for our stamping. So that's going to go here. This one's going to go like that. So let's talk about this ribbon. <laughs> it would be really great if you have somebody in the house with you that could hold this, right, the buddy system. If you don't have a buddy that can help you, like I don't have a buddy right now and Tyler or Tyler or Tigger wouldn't be able to help me at the moment. He doesn't have opposable thumbs, but this is what I would do. Like I have a reversible tweezers. It looks, you thought it was DSP. Yay, it looks, yeah, it almost comes across as DSP. If you have a tweezers, this would be my first attack. Like line of attack. Go and have the tweezers hold the ribbon like this. And this could work like that but it kind of folds it over. So what I might do, hang on, I'm gonna go grab a clipboard. So if you have a clipboard, that would help. Somebody once taught me this. If you have a clipboard, it actually works really good. So you're going to have that folded in section right there. And then now, it just works better. It's less, I don't know, like it doesn't, you just, it's just easier, I think, to have the clipboard. Like that. And you're gonna do an, a knot, a knot knot for this, not an overhand knot, a real knot. Okay, so clipboard would help a lot for that one. And now once you have it tied, you could always bring it down to see a little bit more of the little loop at the top. But definitely a clipboard comes in handy. If you guys don't have a clipboard in your stamp room or your craft room, it, like, it wouldn't hurt to have one. They sell them at the dollar store for like a dollar. And then if you ever go crafting somewhere and you need to have it on your lap while you're crafting, then you can go grab your clipboard. Okay, let's get glue happy. So this one can get glued, this one can get glued. I'm gonna glue this one and this. 
pretty paper, you guys, on the back side of that as well. All right, so a little bit back here. Just a reminder, today, you guys, is the 10th of April. Um, it is the last day to subscribe to get the April Paper Pumpkin to have it shipped directly to your house. I do get a handful usually, maybe five, sometimes 10. It just depends on if I think the Paper Pumpkin is one that's gonna be a hit or not. I kinda like guess. I do get extra of them and like they are usually in my um, video when, you, when I flip the camera around. It, if I have extra, they're in the video behind me. And at the moment, I don't have any left because I usually run out by the end of the, by the time Kelly has the class, I usually have one or two left and then they're usually gone by the time she's done with class. Um, I was gonna cut off um, any extra overhang, but it didn't seem to have any overhang. If you're wondering what the, the April paper pumpkin is, um, I sent an email reminder about it this morning, so you would have gotten the email from me. Um, if you don't get emails from me, um, thanks Randy, if you don't get emails from me, you can go to my events calendar and Kelly is going to be gone, you guys, that last week. She's traveling for work. And originally the paper pumpkin was set up for the 24th, but she leaves the morning of the 25th to go away for a few days. So she said she just can't make it happen doing class the night before, right? I don't blame her. So she actually um, had me switch it to the 23rd. She said she'd come in here on the 23rd at 6 p.m. She'll do the April paper pumpkin class. And so if you go to April 23rd, you can find the details for the next paper pumpkin. It's called um, All the Little Things. And then you can see the details, the coordinating colors, what you get for the paper pumpkin. If you wanna subscribe through me, my link is down here. If you want to buy prepaid subscription, um, if you buy a one, two, no, a one, three, six, or 12 month subscription um, and you get a prepaid code, you could, it qualifies for a uh, free class for me it could be because what's happening is you're using the prepaid code to put in an order and orders over $45 help to qualify for a free class. So just the note you guys today is the 10th. So if anybody wants to have it shipped directly to them, you'd want to get into your account to make sure you have it set up to ship that way. So we're going to now flip these over and we'll wait on that one. So we'll do these two first. Also, uh, the Technique Club class is uh, RSVP. You're guaranteed the kit if you sign up through today. If you sign up after today, it just, it, it you may or may, may not be able to. It just depends if I have kits left over. Uh, I have 16 sign up at the moment and I'm planning to make up for 20. I'm making, so I have four left in case, um, I have four extra at the moment. Um, those cards are what Rose teaches um, next week, Tuesday, the 18th. She's doing the class via YouTube Live. And in case you're wondering what the cards look like, uh, she's showing me how to, you get a, a page in your book. It's going to look something like this, very similar. But the cards, you guys, she sent me little pictures here to share the cards. There's three cards that you're going to make. And so that's one of the cards. And then a fun fold right here like that. So that's going to be your second card. And then I got to work on kidding these up. So she sent me all the measurements <laughs> and that's the other card. So again, today's the 10th of the month. And so with the Technique Club class, orders are submitted between the 1st and the 10th of the month. Um, and then that's guaranteed a spot. And then if you sign up after, it just depends if I have kits or not. So just a reminder, <laughs> there's a lot going on today because it's the 10th of the month. So we're going to just pop this up with dimensionals. Uh, the other thing, you guys, next week, Monday night, already, oh my goodness, already, is Mystery Card Night. So make sure you check my cards by crispy.com website. Um, in the next day or two, I will be publishing clue one and you can get your supplies ready um, for uh, mystery card night, which is next week, Monday, the 17th. It's at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. So that's coming up as well, you guys. A lot is coming up. April is a super busy month. Crazy, crazy busy. So this one, you guys, I'm gonna put it flat over here, but I'm gonna use a dimensional on this side. So we're gonna pop up on that side. And then I'm gonna run a little bit of liquid glue back there. And that will just rest on, I think I want that up there. So this is going to set right about here, like that. And then we're gonna grab a glue dot, 
glue dot goes right in the middle of that open area and you're going to set your little ribbon <clears throat> right in it and then you're going to use your ribbon scissors to trim this. The other thing I'm working on this week, you guys, I have the, so I got the calendar. The PDF is almost up to date. I mean, it's just being proofread, so it is up to date. It just needs to be proofread. I'll be working on all my events through August. I'm going to be putting out the um, generic versions of them with the cards under construction pictures. And as the cards are created, then the cover photo gets updated. I am working also on the In Color Club. So I do an In Color Club every year with the new In Colors. I had, I think, 15 or 17 people that did that with me last year. Uh, it includes everything for the In Color. So you can get it month by month, slowly but surely. And after five months, you have all the new In Colors. Hi, Stacey Burns. And so that information, you guys, I'll be publishing that this week as well, along with all my product shares. So I will be doing a paper share, embellishment share, and also a ribbon share for those people that like to get a little sampling of everything. And if you want to get that through me, um, the perk that you get from me is if you get the whole thing. So if you get the ribbon, the paper, and the embellishments, you can pick out a free online class with me. Um, so that is one of the perks that I offer versus giving away extra free product. I give away a free class when you purchase the um, all three product shares for me. All right, you guys, I had three little rhinestones that I added to the card front. Rhinestones are my favorite, and I just, <laughs> there we go. That needs to fit in there just a little bit better. I sliced open the entire side when I did that. So let's fix that. We're just going to put a little tape over on that side and shut that up. Okay. I don't know about stelling. Oh, okay, we can stell on the side here a little bit along this outer edge of the, the Melon Mambo. There we go. So product share information is coming. The In Color Club information is coming. If you guys didn't see it, I did publish the designer series paper sampler information. The In Com, the new one with the annual catalog. Uh, all the details are found on my May 1st calendar, May 1st. I'm at the point where I have to almost start capping it because I have over 60. I'm putting a little glue dot, you guys, just down here. I think I'm at 60, and that is going to be a little bit much. My brother is already not excited about 60. My brother always helps me with it, you guys. <laughs> oh, and we did uh, 52 of them for the last one, and now we're over 60, and he is already cringing at the thought of doing 60 of them. Um, <laughs> so you can see this is Stella here, you guys. That You can just see it along the edge here, just a little glimmery. Um, you could also Stella this edge if you want. So, oh, hi, Annette Rollin. Annette Rollin, if you can hear me, I got your, your card and your check in the mail today. Um, let's see if I put it on the, I should have it here. Hang on. Where did I set it? Um, where did I set it? Here we go. I have more Happy Mail. Thank you, Annette, for popping on here. So, I have more Happy Mail to share for you guys. So, Annette sent me an Easter card. It says, warm Easter wishes with a little Easter egg and bunny in a little watering can. So Annette, this did come today. Thank you so much. I have the check that was inside as well. And then this one came to me from Miss Pat Thomas. Look at this pretty card here using, oh, colorful brand. It was colorful seasons, I think. It was just breathe. Um, it had a little sun chair in it, a Barakanak chair or an Abernak chair. I have a hard time saying that word, but the Akronak back chair or whatever <laughs> that people see on their, you see them on your deck, right? Or your pier. Um, and so this one came from Pat Thomas. And then on the inside, it says sending positive thoughts and feel good wishes. So I got that two more happy mails, you guys. So yay, I forgot those were sitting over there. So um, Annette and Pat, that did come in today, the mail today. All right. So that card is finito, finished. And we got one more to make, you guys. And the last one is a pretty one as well. Great color combination. So let's set this one over here and grab this one. All right, so this one features the Night of Navy Coastal Cabana and Fresh Freesia. So the color combination uh, completely got picked because of this designer series paper, which has Fresh Freesia, Coastal Cabana, and Night of Navy in it. And it's a little bit of a fun fold. And we're going to work on that one next. It does use... Um, either Versamark or Coastal Cabana. And I think I mentioned that in the tutorial, you could use either. Um, I used Versamark back here just to give it a little bit of texture. 
If you use Coastal Cabana, you might see it a little bit more. But your call, what you want to do. And we need to grab the kit here. Oh, thanks, Annette. All right, so let's grab the kit in this one. So you'll have lots of little bits and parts, you guys. You're going to have a Knight of Navy and a Fresh Freesia. These just are like kind of on quarter sheet mats. You know, five and a half by four and a quarter and then four by five and a quarter. So that's that piece. You'll have this Coastal Cabana, which is needing to get burnished. And that goes on there like that. You have the Knight of Navy arm, which you need to burnish it, fold it. And that has a white inside, oh, a fresh freesia inside that also has a white. So double matting on the inside. And then the outside of it will have fresh freesia in white. And then your designer paper, you guys, is going to go over here. So that's what you should have in there. Plus, you should have some open weave ribbon that is in Fresh Freesia, and you should have three of the opal rounds in here, in your kit. <laughs> okay, Jean, just put it here. Add a Renadac chair. Add a Renadac chair. That's the word I was looking for, thank you. If I don't have it actually spelled out in front of me, I butcher the word. It's like um, the Arella Borrelius. The, the Northern Lights, they call it the Arella Borrelia or the Arella Borellis. You guys, I have the hardest time. It is a tongue twister for me. I can't say it. It's so hard. All right. Shoot to do. We're going to do Fresh Freesia. I think we're going to switch it up and we're going to put Granny Apple on this one just to see how different it is. Could I be on the wait? Oh! Yes, Nicole Herrick. If you're watching, you can be on the wait list too. Um, Nicole, if you're still in town then you could potentially be coming in person. So Veronica and Nicole, you guys both were uh, reaching out about the retro swap. So yes, Nicole, if you're watching, you could be on the wait list. Um, I'm going to reach out to um, Maria. Maria, Maria Gilbertson is watching. I need to know if Maria is going to, she signed up. Maria, you signed up for a lot, girlfriend. Maria, I think, I'm waiting for Maria to confirm. Where's my... Here, Maria Gilbertson. You signed up for two groups, Maria. So if Maria doesn't do both groups, Nicole, then you could most likely definitely have one of Maria's groups. But I need to confirm with Maria if she's going to be able to fulfill either one of the groups or both of them. But yes, okay. Good to know I have people waiting in the wings to help us with those that couldn't do it. All right, so for this one, you guys, the other flower stamps that get used are the other this other little pair and i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to do the detail first and we're going to do one up here one here i'm just kind of guessing where these are going to go <laughs> it's what i'm guessing um i feel like i should have stamped the sentiment first because that would be hard yeah fun folds with arms are awesome i love them too linda this match up that middle area and we're match up that middle area you get another side so if you don't like the way you stamp it you can always flip it over but just know that we do have to put leaves on here we need to grab knight of navy ink and if you're wondering about this <laughs> your happy birthday is not going to fit on here the whole length you're either going to have to mask it or use something else that is shorter okay your call if you don't like the concept of hmm, doing something like this then definitely find a different stamp that will work and just fill up the area without having to do this kind of two-step thing here so i'm inking up the birthday i'm going to just practice along the bottom oh it's pretty straight okay and then i'm gonna ink it up again we're just doing birthday don't get the happy so the birthday Oh, good. Okay. So the thing is, though, when you do this, you have to, have to, have to clean it really good in between. You cannot have any residue from where you had ink. Otherwise, it will show up and make a halo over there. So once you've cleaned it, you definitely want to stamp off and like dry it 
And then let's practice with our happy. Happy. Just ink up the happy. Okay, <laughs> practice makes perfect. So we're gonna do the happy, and especially on white. Oh yeah, okay, good stuff. I didn't mean for it to actually come out like straight on the first time. I really was thinking that it wasn't. <laughs> you guys probably think everything's always straight for me all the time. I guess it takes a lot of practice and then it does. <laughs> all right, I mean, and I practiced on this when we first made the cards and practicing on the orange paper really helped. And if it was not straight on the orange paper, I would have kept practicing. All right, so clean up that stamp. That's good. Let's go back to, okay, so navy and, oh, we got more purple on the inside. Hi, Nora. Thank you so much. Let's grab that inside and get that done while we're at it. Again, I'm going to do the little inside one first. Right there. And then we're going to stamp off. Cool. I think that might be it for the Frisia which is carrying over. It's an in color that they carried over. I was sad it wasn't soft, succulent, or evening evergreen, but I guess girl can't complain about having a purple in color carryover. Okay, I got cat fur on here, you guys. So let's get that off. Let's see what this looks like with granny apple. I'm curious. It might be bright and cheerful, or it might be too much. And I'm gonna do second strength. And we're going to put that off to the side. Oh, that looks very nice. It's a more cool color. There. I'm okay with that. Granny looks nice, that second strength. And then we're going to do, I think, like, so those are first strength. I have this tendency that I want to do second strength. Ugh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the second strength there. So let's, let's do a second strength there. We're gonna fill one in over here. We're gonna do one right there. We're gonna call it good. Now, the one thing I wish I would have done different is I, I wish I would have stamped these uh, this guy, like this one down a little bit and filled in that middle area because I stamped them a little bit closer together there. But when this gets on here, it's gonna be okay. I'm thinking I could potentially, I have an idea if I take and stamp off and grab a little scrap paper. I could get a leaf in there. Go right like there. And I just got an extra leaf in there and it fills in my white space. And I'm okay with that now. All right. I use sweet sugar plum. Yes, Laura Sullivan, that's a perfect idea. Sweet sugar plum was a past color. That would definitely work very nice. Um, it, it looked okay until you put your ribbon on. Okay, very good point. It, it, sugar plum, plum would definitely look good. Can you use a different ribbon? Um, save this, like if you don't, if you have a different ribbon, like the white crinkled or something else, Laura, just swap out the ribbon for a different color and keep the, keep the sugar plum ink. I think that that is a good option or alternative. It has a more pink, I think. Sugar plum was a little bit more pinky. All right, so let's see here. We can glue this, and we're gonna glue this. Let's glue this and make that happen for the right, for the, oh, let's do one more. Let's do, oh, we're not done, hang on. We have one more thing to stamp, but I got the glue open, so we're gonna do a little gluing. I forgot to do the flowers around the background of the Coastal Cabana. So then this, let's do this, and this one. All right, so this one will go on here. This one goes on this one. This will go on here. Freesia and navy, that is beautiful to me. And then this one can go on here for now. And let's finish our stamping. So the little inside piece, the little inside flower, flower is what I'm gonna use. And it's hiding right there. It is that. 
actually, let's look here. Yeah, I think that's what it is. And we're just gonna use Versamark. You could use Coastal Cabana, like second strength, or you could do um, Bermuda Bay at like third strength. But Versamark, if you use Versamark, that works just as well. And I'm just gonna create a little border, kind of alternate here so it doesn't look all the same. I don't want uniformity. Oh, the granny does look nice, doesn't it? Switching it up. I feel like that this is granny at first strength and then that's granny at second. It just looks a little bit softer. And I bet granny would have looked really good on those other cards as well instead of using pear pizzazz. So I'm just going zigzaggy around the edge here. I do have to do a second row because when you open this up, it's a little bit down and a little bit high. So we're gonna go around the edge here. Hi, Holly. Do a little bit right there. I'm gonna do that one like that. Twist this around. So Versamark is a pigment pad. It's great for embossing powders and it just adds a little bit of color to the background, but it doesn't really add color because what it's doing is just making it look clear. So I just, so it doesn't look so plain, right? That's all that the Versamark is acting back here. And I'm gonna do one more right there. Okay, so it's just a pigment pad, it's kind of gooey. Now that that's done, I think if you had a little birthday sentiment, you could put a little baby sentiment on the inside. I think that would help. So we're gonna flip this over and we can glue that and we can glue this. So let's do all these and that one. So let's get those out of the way. We'll do this one first. That goes right on the fresh freesia. And then the arm goes on to the coastal cabana. So you've got your Knight of Navy on your coastal. And that opens like that. And then this piece goes on the inside. And so, so far so good. Now this one, I think I gave everybody eight inches and that is, that is enough to actually wrap this around and tie it. Um, it's such a small little area that if you would cut it and then put it on, it really doesn't make that big of a difference. But like, let's say you're having a hard time tying this, right? Because I just tried to do it and I'm like, oh man, that's kind of not easy to do. You could in fact grab your tweezers, your reverse tweezers here and help hold it, right? Then you can grab your ends and get those little tails tied. That helps, but it might not leave it very tight, right? So the other option, and this is how I generally operate, it will use a little bit more tear and tape, but I like the way that it comes out better. So I'm going to put the tear and tape. So there's, there's a few different ways to do that, but I'm gonna put the tear and tape on here I'm gonna put my ribbon exactly where I want it. And then trim off this. So you have this much left. I'm gonna secure these ends with some more tear and tape. Okay, so far so good. Grab the dimensionals. We're gonna put them along the back here. And one more right there. Set this down on the front of the card and then we're just going to tie the ribbon around it. So then this goes here. And now you can take this whole piece like this, slip it underneath. Now you've got a lot more wiggle room and you can take and do an overhand knot. So as you tighten it, then just pull your tails where you want them to go. Grab your ribbon scissors. And trim your tails. And that one I did a little too long, so we're gonna trim it a little more. All right, so you had a little ribbon left over. And to me, that was easier than trying to tie it around. 
All right. Then in your kit, you should have, whoa, should have some opal rounds. I believe I have three of them in there for you. And yeah, Deb, I love this color combination too. So we're gonna put an opal rounds right in the center of the three flowers. And that's what I've got. The opal rounds are going away, sad face. So that's the front and then it opens like that. So if you need to get some opal rounds before they're gone, go for it. The iridescent rhinestones did stay um, for the next catalog. So they are very similar to the opal rounds, but more gem-like. stella Ing, I would do the border here. Just go around the edge with the Stella pen like this. And then the other thing you could do is your DSP. Definitely could do the DSP like this. Just put a little bit of bedazzling on there. Okay. Oh, thanks, Deb Fitzgerald. I'm glad you could make it for the live as well. Okay. So what's your favorite, you guys? We got all four of them made. We have these two that were kind of a pair. And then our pink and melon mambo. And then we have our night of navy and fresh freesia with coastal cabana. That's what we've got. Four beautiful, bright, cheerful cards ready for spring. Thanks, Susan Ray Hendricks. All right. Oh, Sherry loves them as well. Cindy says they're pretty. Oh, Laura said she made hers a Mother's Day card. That's perfect. Um, thanks, Annette Rollin. All right. I guess if I had to pick one. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. I have a hard time. I like this one a lot because I like the bow and I love the, how the bouquet ended up being full over here. But I do love the purple with the navy and I do like this layout. You guys, If <laughs> this is a classic easy layout. I love it. So to me, they're all pretty. I, just, I agree with you guys. They're all pretty. <laughs> um, yep, that's what Linda Hunt just said. They're all pretty. Perfect, perfect. Um, Cindy said the pink and the mellow mambo. Very nice. Or the pink, the mellow mambo is your favorite. So beautiful. Bet Debbie likes the first two. Good, good, good. All right, so you guys, I'll save those aside for those will be some prizes in the future. Um, Laura would pick the first one and Deb says they're all beautiful. Yay. Um, again, you guys, if you're joining late, I do have, I think, six sets of this class available. So if you want to get signed up for this class, it was $15 or $21 if you need it mailed or um, you could come in person. Uh, Diane, Diane Bogenhagen's teaching this class on Tuesday of next week at 6 p.m. So if you want to come in person, Diane's also kidding up this class and doing an in-person version. Uh, if you want to do mm, mm, uh, porch pickup with me and you're in person, it would be a $30 order. If you want them mailed, then it was a $45 order. So, and again, we talked about paper pumpkin that if you want to get a prepaid subscription, like if you get a $63 three month subscription, and you use my host code to get the order, you could get this class for free. So that's a way that you could kind of double dip and get a pump your pumpkins and get a free class from me. So, oh, Melanie Foy said that she made her first two cards with irresistible blooms. And um, she used a barber to fill it in. And I'm trying to figure out what you're meaning because I don't think you meant barber, a barber to fill it in. That was just kind of funny. Um, but yes, irresistible blooms when I'm a perfect um, choice for your flowers if you had irresistible blooms. Um, okay, so let's grab my book, you guys. We're going to do a little door price drawing for those that placed orders to get the class for free. What happens when you guys place your orders and get your class for free? Um, I get host rewards, and those host rewards is what I use to try to help offset the cost of buying the supplies for classes, and I end up with extra at the end of the catalog cycle, and then I give that stuff away to people who help place orders. So it's usually retired um, Stampin' Up! goodies that I do share, so that's how that works, and um, the deal is that they get, um, the door prize gets put into your next class package that you have going out. Um, I hang on to it. I don't ship out prizes separately, um, usually by themselves. I usually hang on to them and try to save shipping where I can. Just like what I try to do is when you guys have multiple classes, I try to consolidate as much as I can if I'm kidding up at the same time so that you don't have to pay more shipping. I try to save shipping where we can um, across the board. And I have a green pencil right here. Oh, I had one already. Okay, perfect. So I counted off that there were 
12 people who placed orders. I want to make sure I didn't miss anybody because I was doing it while Tigger was here and I was, I know, completely distracted, you guys. Uh, I think that's what I've got. Okay, so let me grab my phone. We're going to do a little random number generator. Uh, let's see here. So I have 12, so we'll flip this down real quick and show you guys the 12. And then when I hit generate, a number is going to pop up. Number nine. Number nine is Debbie Gast. All right, lucky girl. Debbie Gast, I will have a prize for you in your next class package that I have going out. And you are the lucky winner. So congratulations. You guys, I didn't pull cards for prizes this time, but I did two of them last time. And every now and then I'm going to do two and sometimes I might be doing three. So um, I'm very happy that I will be mailing those cards out. For those of you who have won cards for me in the last week or two, I'm going to get my schedule and print it off and put that in with your card. So that's what I'm waiting for. Those will ship out this week. So yay. Yay to a new schedule, right? <laughs> it's always fun seeing the new schedule. So um, I will do a little, well, do I have it written down here? I don't have it here. The first, uh, oh, I have it right here. Just to let you guys, the sweet classes for May, June, July, and August, I will share them with you right now in case you're wondering what they are. Um, I'm going to be featuring Countryside Inn in May, but I'm not using the stamp set per se. I think I'm going to use the stamp set that's featured right after it. I called Love and Lasting or something. I'm not the biggest fan. I, I don't know if you guys were watching me last week when I opened up the stamp set and I was like, whoa. Um, let me just get the name of it really quick. I'm going to flip this back down. I'm going to shut this. You guys don't see all my jibber, jibber notes here. Um, there's a stamp set. I'll tell you the name that, so in case you're like, oh, I wasn't going to buy that stamp set. Um, yep, yeah, good. Okay, so the stamp, the bundle is called Countryside Inn, page 62. In case you're a demonstrator, discount shoppy, or hobbyist, you can go look. This It's um, called Countryside Corners. Um, oh, I have it right here. I can show you the stamp set. Um, Mary got it. Mary got it, so I can show you... Let's see here. The name of this is called Lasting Joy. Okay, so the this is the, the stamp set that goes with that suite. And um, I'm like, oh my goodness. Like, it's all one stamp. One stamp. And so how I have a hard time figuring out how I would use this in a class. And I don't like challenges that are over my head sometimes. And so I'm like, oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to necessarily use the stamp set in the class. I'm actually, so this is the, what the new catalog looks like, you guys. The dies are super cool, though. To me, I like the dies. So Mary Lamke won these. So I'm going to definitely feature the dies in the class. But there is a stamp set on the page right after. It's called Lasting Joy. I think that that, oh, well, that's not going to work if I can't order that till May, though. Oh, okay, I got I to, gotta, like, double check something. <laughs> I just realized that if I can't have that part of the pre-order, then... I have to see if Lasting Joy is part of the pre-order. I'm pretty sure it was, but maybe it wasn't. Okay, well, anyways, so that's my thought is Countryside for May, but featuring the Lasting Joy stamp set with it. And then, you guys, just so you know, I've got for the sweet class for June is going to be Let's Go Fishing. Um, July is going to be Earth and Elegance. And then August will be Bright and Beautiful. So in case you guys want to have a little Im information on what's coming up for the sweet classes, that's what we picked. So... Veronica says, loves the, the dies, not the stamp set. I kind of agree with you. So now I just need to go make sure that that is the case because if for some reason I can't buy the stamp set Lasting Joy right now, then I think I might make Bright and Beautiful be the um, May one and save the other one for later. So we'll have to see. I have to figure that out right now. Um, Okay, I have I have a little bit of homework to do, you guys. I just realized that I got homework, so I'm gonna work on that and figure that out before I publish the calendar. <laughs> All right, so congratulations to Debbie for winning the door prize, you guys. Um, we'll stay tuned here. Definitely Wednesday, we'll see you for the Share, Create, Inspire, and somewhere in the middle, I wanna sneak in the Last Chance stuff. But if you guys need to know where the Last Chance stuff is, just look at the look at the spreadsheet. It's on my calendar. Um, if you go to, in case anybody's wondering, if you go to cardsbychrisby.com. You can see on my website, I have the last chance lists out there under the blog and news, newsletters and files. They're the first two things there. You can see everything that is available in the last chance. And if you really want to know, you just go to the stampinup.com 
website. And if you go to the section that is called last chance. So when you click your last chance stuff, you guys, there's a whole section on let's like the last. So um, specials, last chance products. So right here, if you're really wanting to see what is going to be retiring and what the prices are, it's all in here like that. So just a heads up that, you know, that I want to go through the catalog with you page by page. Um, I need to get it all highlighted and then do the live with you. So that's what I'm still on my radar to get that done yet this week. So Jeannie made all of hers into graduation cards. Perfect. Um, awesome. All right, you guys. Well, I'm going to say goodbye. It's 2.40. I've got a lot of paper to get cut in this afternoon. I said, I should say, I get to cut a lot of paper this afternoon. So I'm going to work on that. And if you need anything, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, Veronica, I need to know from you if you want to pick up that group from the person who can't do it, because if not, it's going to Nicole. So, all right, you guys, I'll be reaching out to you too, Nicole, <laughs> soon here. So lots of sunshine, love, and hugs to you guys. We'll see you the next time. Love you long time. I'm going to count to 10, and then I'll end it. So just know I am done in case it cuts out early on me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 